All right, we're ready to get started. Um, Representative Hill, if you, before we get started, if you'd lead us in prayer, appreciate it. Let us pray. Our dear kind Heavenly Fathers, we come unto you with humble hearts, thanking you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have, Lord, to to work for our constituents and to try to better the world. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we we receive your leadership, your guidance, and your wisdom, Father, that only comes from thee. Guide us in all the decisions that we make, though that may be pleasing to thee. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to do the, your will. And we thank you, Lord, for each and every one that's here today. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. All right, Representative Buckner, do you want to sit at the desk or you want to go to the podium? I want you to go to the podium then. Okay, members of the committee, we're going to be we're going to be hearing House Bill 245 by Representative Buckner. Uh, before we get started, I, I want to uh, remind the committee that this is not a pass or fail as far as the the bill is concerned it is to determine whether or not this committee wants to send it on to have an actuarial study done to see if it's going to affect the retirement system uh, in a plus or minus way or it has no effect at all and so that's what we've got to decide whether or not we want to send that on now um, these actuarial studies are not cheap but at the same time it's it's in our best interest to to look at these and and question the author of the bill to find out their best uh, information on the bill so that we can decide whether or not we want to send it over and when we finish hearing each each uh, person and we hear from anyone in the audience and we finish up with the questions uh, I'll just simply ask uh, for a motion to send to the actuarial and we will take it um, take it in that way and be up or down and go to the next bill. Does anyone on the committee have a question about that? Okay. Representative Buck. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if I might just have a, sec a moment of personal privilege. I've got three special little girls with me that are students at, um, in Columbus at school. One of them is Lily. And one is Ellie, did I, and then Miller is my great niece. And they've been up here watching the work that we do all day today because this is their spring break. So I wanted you to know who was with us today. Do they want to come up and speak to the group? <laughs> <laughs> There's one that might, the other two probably know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we're glad to, we're, we're glad to have them here today and uh, hope that, uh, what you've seen today, is, well, most of what you've seen has been a positive impression on, on, uh, they on have, your mind. They have been right cute. They said we walk a lot, sit a lot, talk a lot. Yeah, and if they <laughs> went to the ante room, they decide we eat a lot. So, yeah. uh, so okay. um, Thank you, Mr. Right. Chairman. I appreciate that, and I'm glad that y'all are here. This bill, I was asked if I would carry it for the Police Officers Annuity and Benefit Fund. And actually what has happened is that um, it's, it's not a huge amount of retirement for family members, but when a officer gets the retirement and if he is married and he passes away and the wife is to continue to get the retirement, um, if she were to remarry after his death, then it, it is she doesn't receive it anymore and what they would like to do is just remove lines 14 and 15 and say that the surviving spouse can continue to receive the retirement regardless of whether they remarry after the death of the the um, retiree so it's benefit um, it's to the spouse that will continue instead of being eliminated the fund has said that they do not think that it's an going to be a burden to them to cover this and that they'd like to offer it as a benefit to the officer's surviving spouse. Okay. Anyone on the committee have a question for Representative Buckner? 
All right, I've got one. Uh, the retired member, if if the retired person dies, then the spouse automatically gets the, the benefit. And it, but if she remarries, then she it, does. It then, goes then, it's, away. then it goes away. Currently. If, and and I don't know this, if what would happen to the benefit if if he died bef before, I mean in other words before he retired, does she get her benefit at that time? Do you know that? Mm -mm, I don't know. Okay. For, not for sure. Okay. All right. Is there anyone in the audience that wanted to speak to this bill? And I don't see the. Don't see the firefighters here today. Mm -mm. Oh. No. It's a. Come, come on up to the microphone, please. Do you, you oh, oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> All right. Okay. But All right. You, you're going you're gonna to be here. And, and, and yeah. Question, okay. It depends on which option the, they the, chose. The retiree chooses. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Does anyone have any questions? Just follow up, if I may, Mr. Chairman, to, to that. Is, is that election done at retirement? Yes. Okay. So, so to the to the chairman's question, the the spouse couldn't get the benefit if if, if the the if he died um, in the line of duty. The person died while still working in the line of duty, or other that may the death in the line of duty. It may actually be treated differently. It's different. Um, um, Right. If they are vested, then you would treat it as if they had chosen a particular option that they had. Okay, so there is a default option. Uh, that, okay, I think that's what right. the chairman was looking right. for. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they question. don't expect that this will be very many cases, but for the ones that, that it does involve, it's, 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 not, it's a lot of money to them, but not that much money as far as the bottom line of the fund. Okay, all right. Um, so I'd appreciate y'all sending it for a study. I really didn't think it would be a physical bill, but um, since it is, I'd appreciate it being sent okay. forward. Any other questions for the lady? Uh, what's the, uh, 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 I'm looking for a motion then. Chairman, I, I, um, it's a proper form of motion that you move to send it to study. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, would, I would do that. All right. So well, I have a motion and a second. second. Any other comments about the bill? All those in favor of sending it on for actuarial study, if you'd raise your hand. It has passed. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Representative Blackman. We, we could probably figure out how to do that, I'm sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the committee, uh, bring before you House Bill 336. And uh, just to give a little bit of background, our uh, school superintendent and board of education in Houston County had met with the legislative delegation. And what they had, had hoped could be accomplished, or at least considered, is that they, they uh, retire some teachers and oftentimes they may go on to teach at a college or a private institution and they would like wanted to try to figure out how they could um, either hire them back and such that they are eligible still to 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 maintain and, and receive their retirement but at the same time not hit the uh, teachers retirement uh, system adversely um, and so this legislation is uh, what we came up with um, and it you know would allow them to re or to hire back in even post retirement and collecting retirement as a you know public uh, school teacher and allow them to teach on staff uh, full time right now they can only go up to, to part time but the benefits uh, that they would receive with regards to future retirement would have to be paid into the system there would be no future liability um, and uh, not being an attorney, I can't say as to whether or not there are any, you know, provisions that would would uh, be contrary to that. But I, I do believe legislative council's done a good job in in securing um, that intent of the legislation. Uh, 
Uh, number 16. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, to Mr. Chairman. Now, you're saying if a teacher retired and was drawing their retirement, they could go back to work in the system full time, and then would they keep continue to pay into the retirement? They would be required to either themselves or the system would have to pay into teacher retirement, but there would be no future liability. There would be no increase in their retirement Correct. for those years going forward. Yes, sir. Thanks, sir. <laughs> Right now, we, we're at, uh, in a position that um, only up to 49% can come back and teach. So uh, this bill would change uh, the dynamics of allowing uh, individuals to come back and work full time, but it would not have an adverse effect on the retirement system. Uh, number nine. Yes, sir. I, I, um, just a question to, to the gentleman. So, and this is while you're talking about your county. This has statewide application. Of course. Does it not? Um, so, I'm trying to understand. Now you could come back at 49 percent. If you work more than 49 percent, you can't get your retirement. You know, the, the retirement um, stops. Mm -hmm. Correct, Chairman Benton. Mm -hmm. um, and currently, we, we've had some bills along, along that this year. I believe 176, one, mm -hmm. 175, 176, that talked about having systems. Uh, to pay in today, but my understanding is today, uh, if a teacher comes back to work part time, they pay in the system, but they the, they pay their part, or they don't pay any in at all. Mr. Nothing's Chairman, nothing is paid. Nothing is paid. Nothing's paid on their behalf. So, so my question, I, I guess, to, to the chairman or, or to the gentleman is, if we're not accruing any additional liabilities, i.e., they come back to work and, and it doesn't change their last to your salary, you know, it doesn't give them any more years of service. What is the reason that we would have them, what was your reason in drafting the bill that you would have them, I mean, I know it's good for the system, it, it puts more money in the system, but I'm, I'm not sure having somebody to pay into the system, um, what are we trying to, what are you trying to accomplish there? Well, I, I think there, the biggest concern that our local folks had heard is that this would adversely impact TRS, and they did not want to do that. So this was their offer, is that we want uh, this teacher back in our system teaching with us bad enough that we can offer to pay into the system on their behalf or, you know, um, their portion and our portion with no future liability anticipated. And again, um, I think they were seeing uh, high quality uh, instructors and teachers that had been there for, for many, many years and knew the subject matter very, very well that um, still wish to, to continue to teach, but also wish to uh, draw retirement based, you know, as they were, were due. And I don't know if I'm answering your question, but that, that's the, the line of thinking. So but if, I, if I'm hearing you, this is the, the trade off they think they need to make to get a full time for somebody to be able to work full time and to get their retirement they need to, to uh, I believe that that, that would be fair to, fair to say to uh, Mr. Chairman is, would it be possible if, if the committee moves forward to, to ask for the actual study to be done with an option A and an option B uh, that of w what the impact would be if they did pay into the system and did not or would that be something that would come later uh, if we brought the, the bill back um, I'd have to check on that because I, I I can't answer your question on that and I don't we don't have a bill A and B, so I don't know whether they would do an actuarial study A and B. Well, here's, if I may, and I don't want to belabor the, the chair's point, but my understanding is if we do a physical, um, is that actuarial study, actuarial I guess, study, is really yeah. what we're doing, not a fiscal impact statement, but an actuarial study, if we did it like this with them paying in, that's going to come back with a smaller impact on the system than if we did this bill without them paying in. Because without them paying into the system, it would impact the, the, the system more. So my understanding is if, if you have a bill that impacts the system more, in other words, later on we couldn't change this bill to say you only pay in 50% or you only pay in 80% of what you would because that would cost the system more. So if, if we do an actual study here like this and, and the, the committee, and I don't know what the will of the committee or the legislature would be next year, but if we do an actual study on your bill like this, and then the, the will of, of Chairman Benton and members of the committee are home, is to let this happen, but maybe not have the school system pay the full amount in. 
that would have a larger impact on the retirement system and we would not be able to pass that bill next year is that's that correct. true that's correct so I, I just bring that up to if we studied it without them paying in you'd know the, the impact and then you could come back and do it but i'll leave that to uh Chairman right. blackman let's, on, let's, on his own. let's get the expert up here uh buster were you planning on speaking on this all right I have heard of, of potentially some unintended consequences that might fall in line with, with that particular angle, but I, I would defer to. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, I actually will tell you that I've been in a number of meetings where, where Representative Blackman has been with some of these same constituents. And so I will speak to it, if you would like, both from a retirement system as well as a former administrator. Um, so I stand for your question. Okay. Uh, the question was. I, I think the question about it, if, if you don't, uh, is, is if we if we send this bill to an actuarial study like this, it would have more money going into the system without additional liabilities, so it would have fiscal impact X. If we th then decided we were going to pay less into the system, it would have fiscal impact X plus something, and and we wouldn't be able to do that bill next year, correct? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't know about your procedure, but I do know what you're saying, and as you understand it, you are, you are explaining it correctly. It would have a greater liability if they did not have. From an administrative standpoint, um, what this would have the potential of doing of an un unintended consequence would be where you would bring people back to work in positions that may be funded, may have TRS funding associated with it, or they may be filling those positions. So you would, it would certainly be if I were administering a system as I did in the past, and I wanted to save money, I would look perhaps to hire people who I did not have to pay their employer and employee contributions for. Um, the constituents that Representative Blackman has met with do sort of see this as you have identified as a compromise because they want to do anything they can do to sustain the system sure. so that when they're retired there, but to have these people to be a tool within their resource bank to particularly, uh, there's another bill related to this, but as this bill is currently written, and I'm not sure if this was the intent of it, the def definition that we have of teacher is a very broad definition. Um, uh, as we currently define teacher, that essentially would include literally any TRS member to include superintendents, counselors, um, uh, librarians, and others. And uh, maybe that was intended, I'm not exactly sure, but that definition of teacher uh, as a member for us is a fairly broad definition. Okay. Uh, number 16. Would that be uh, instructional staff? Would that be what would, what would you call the... The ones that are in the classroom teaching. Well, how would you separate them? Would you call them instructional staff? Or? Well, it would be however you would like the bill, I think, to be specified. Whether, But if, it's, is it, if it specifies teacher, that literally can okay. include both okay. administrators as way. well as classroom teachers. Let me answer it different ways. Uh, what, do you call, what would you call the one that's in the classroom teaching that's not a superintendent or uh, something else? Well, the instructional world... They're defined as teachers in retirement legislation. They're they're defined as teachers as well. Okay. But Instructing again, the staff. definition is broader in the retirement legislation. Thank you, Representative. Did you have another question, you want? No, sir. I, I get to. Uh, I, I get you. Just for each position, it's going to budget the amount going in there, even though it might not be needed. We're not going to be able to buy in individually. Uh, teacher, as, as you like, like say, so use this definition. We wouldn't uh, budget less money to Fulton County or House County because they had a, a retired person in the slot. So, if if the money weren't there and being paid into the TRS system, the, the, the system might well use it for something else. I'm sure very good for education, but but uh, that that's that makes sense to me, Mr. Chairman. Uh, that the money is budgeted for that purpose, so it would go. And I see why the bill was written this way. But I'll explain one coping mechanisms that districts have used with this classification of people. Many districts actually would contract with a person at a salary less than 100% to absorb the cost that they're paying. 
And uh, many people who are retired are willing to do that. Um, oftentimes they may come back and just teach and have not have extracurricular duties or extra responsibilities so that it makes it, again, it's, it's really a win-win for our systems. It's a win-win for our retirees uh, and for students because it brings qualified people back into the classroom. Um, we would just question the definition of teacher and if that's the intent of the legislation. Okay. Representative Buckner. I'm just curious, Mr. Chair, because these are such expensive studies and we've had Senator Black's bill, which is somewhat similar to this, when we, if we were to send it and this one. Well, Senator Black's is not a fiscal bill, so it doesn't go for. Okay, so it wouldn't have to have no. a study. Okay, I was wondering because I was thinking that would be expensive to do it. There's still a lot of work to do on Senator Black's bill. Okay, I understand. Um, okay, thank you. M my understanding of the original tenor of the bill was that in the case of representative blackman's district that he had school systems that were having trouble getting teachers is that and they were looking to hire uh people to to take to f fill these positions that they were having trouble in and they were willing to to pay the employee and employer share in order to be able to hire those those individuals is that correct in, in certain situations perhaps yes sir I, I think the ability to do that in certain situations i don't think they had a slew of, of uh -huh. instructors they wanted to go out and hire i just think that should the instance arise that perhaps you know maybe w with regards to the gifted program or in a special area that is a little more difficult mm -hmm. perhaps to find a, a, an instructor certainly with the kind of background and expertise and knowledge and you might have an instructor that wants to teach just loves to do that and is really good in the classroom uh, those are some things that i can see uh, being a, a benefit to the students okay uh mr evans question to you if we have a teacher that comes back and works full time if we don't if we don't pay the in other words they come back they don't get any additional benefit but there's nothing paid if there was nothing paid in then what would be the net result for the retirement system uh it'd still be zero it I mean, would be zero um it would actually could be conceivably a negative number because we would not in that case get the employer or employee contribution mm -hmm. can I, okay can I make one sure statement? Yeah. And, and you could, yeah. you could uh, uh, refute this if you'd like to. But I, I don't think the idea is to over incentivize uh, that kind of, of hire necessarily. Mm -hmm. it, it would be an exception, I think, not, not a rule. And, and, you know, obviously we want, I think we want our younger uh, graduates to, to have positions in, in the school system as, as, as needed and as we see fit. But I, I wouldn't, my understanding is, is not to over incentivize this, this kind of situation, so to speak. But is the incentive, is, is that fair to say? Th there would be an incentive because the teacher could come back and work full time, even if it's just three quarters of, of what they were making in order to pay for the teacher retire employee and employer share of teacher retirement. That's still an, that would still be an incentive, correct? Three quarter salary of incentive to, to come back to work. Oh, well, they could do that. They, they could go to work elsewhere if they wanted, you know, if they, if they had the opportunity. Yeah. This, this would just be the opportunity for the public school to utilize their background and expertise, uh, perhaps versus, you know, private or, or college or, or something, some other. Anyway, is that, if that's a fair answer. Certainly. And I think that's what the intent is of the people who have requested the legislation as uh, well. Chairman Martin. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I think the minimus, I understand Mr. Evans, that, the, the amount that we have to put in I and mean, we have our nominal rate that puts in our employee rate and then we have our catch-up rate that, that goes in and, and that the the annual required you know contribution is, is computed and then spread over the payroll for the public school system so, you know so certainly I think with all the, the teachers we have whoever would do this would be a de minimis number that it would change the 22 point or the 23.77 percent to 23 point you know six nine eight or something it, it wouldn't just change the, the percentage because you you're going to get the same net number um, put in unless th there became you know three four percent of the the teaching population turned into this the change would, wouldn't you agree would sort of be de minimis to the program uh, I think mr. chairman you are probably correct in what you say I think one of the things that we would have to in inquire or ask the question is would this impact retirement rates um, I would say that if I were 
let's say, 30 oh, I, years I of experience you, yeah. Le- and that early. I could retire and draw my back. full retirement and then turn around and go back and work 100% and basically get 160% of my salary. Um, looks pretty good. Um, and, again, I don't think the intent is to over-incentivize this, but, uh, but to be a tool to particularly fill gaps. I'll give you an illustration that, that we deal with superintendents, quite frankly. You may be in September, you may have a mathematics teacher resign in the year because they can get a big salary increase going somewhere else. And uh, I'm looking for a math teacher. If you're a parent, you want a good math teacher for your child, but there are not many people in there. And I do, do see that uh, specifically House Bill 320 mentions that. So they will, can go out and find somebody. In that particular case, That's I think, is certainly the legislative intent as well as the administrative intent of a bill such as this. Okay. All right. Representative Kirby. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I, know, I know you've been present for all of these meetings. Senator Black's bill dealing with TRS and this bill, they, I mean, I understand the fiscal bill on fiscal note on this one, why that's not a fiscal note, but they are so close to related. I don't see how we can separate these. I, I think they really got to go back together. And if, because both times we're talking about hiring part time retirees, and one's going to be the impact of the fiscal note, that, and one's with the impact on the TRS. And if, we've, if we're not looking at this together, are we not going to, I mean, we're just going to piecemeal this thing to death, aren't we? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd have to say we, we sort of agree with that position. Um, we had seen the previous bills in a previous session be entered to you as uh, fiscal bills. And um, this particular time, they did not come back as fiscal bills. We're not exactly sure why not. We understand some of the rationale that's been given, but um, they are related, certainly. Does anyone else have a question for either two of the gentlemen up here? Okay. Is there anyone else out in the audience that wanted to speak on this? Okay. But Okay. All right. What are you talking about? I wanted to thank you for hearing the bill before uh, I sat back down if that's okay, Mr. Chairman. We appreciate Chairman. it very much. But don't go anywhere yet. Yes, sir. Um, we always like to hear from TRS on these things. He yeah. 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 Okay. Now, we have one other bill that is very similar to the one we just heard. I'm going to let uh, uh, Chairman Belton come up and present his bill. It's House Bill 320. And then I want us to compare the two bills if we want to send both for study or if we think that one will do what we want to do. So, Chairman Belton, you're on. Thank you, Chairman Benton, and thank you, uh, committee members. I know everyone has a busy day. I sure appreciate you staying late to hear this. My bill is very, very similar to Chairman Black, uh, Blackman's bill, uh, except for line 18. It says a classroom in the curriculum of science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. So I'm saying that Senator, uh, Representative Blackman has a great idea, but I think we need to narrow it down to just a few folks that we really, really, really need uh, and, and, and want to keep. I, 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 my daughter's a teacher. I, I know teachers, in my opinion, teaching is, is under attack right now. And I want to try to do anything we can to promote the teaching profession. And I also feel like we need to promote mentor, mentor teachers, to, to, to be able to, to mentor these younger teachers. And one of the ways I think we need to do that is to keep our, or I call them super teachers, the, the ones we really, really want to keep around. Would this be expensive? Yes, it would. Would it, would it be a, a, a big ask for the, the, the county that wants to do this? Yes, it is. But it's only something that the county, if they really, really wanted that teacher to stick around, uh, they could do that. We have a super teacher, uh, we have a band teacher that uh, won the best band teacher in the state of Georgia. We, we like to keep him around. And that's why I'm, I'm presenting this bill um, it's amazing one out of four Georgians is a child that needs to be educated or is being educated. The number of teachers is declining while the number of students is increasing. And that's why in my pension, we need to help the teaching profession as much as we possibly can. And that's why I'm presenting this bill. I yield for questions. 
Anyone have any questions for Chairman Belton? So we've got a bill that limits those that can come back to basically the STEM uh, STEM classes. Uh, and then we've got one that would allow it to come back for any class. I'd like to hear some comments from the committee on that. Chairman Martin. Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm new to the committee th this year. My, my question is this. It, it would seem that, as you said, Chairman Belton's bill is a subset of Chairman Blackman's bill. My question is, there, therefore, it would seem if they did an actuarial study on Chairman Blackman's bill, by definition, Chairman Belton's bill would be less impactful because it, I mean, all things being relative, you know, you're dealing with a thousand people may do it and Chairman Belton's bill is a hundred people may do it. So if the actuarial study came back on, on Chairman Blackman's bill, could that be applied to both bills? I, I don't know that as a practical matter of how this actuarial, so I know they have to be tied to LC numbers. Uh, that's just a, a question. In other words, if we ordered an actual study on both bills, would they have to do double work or would they just tell you, here's the actual study for, for bill one and then bill subset is you know, that delta one? Well, to, to, the to me, they would have to do one and they would probably pick the more broader base one and then they would do the other one and maybe they wouldn't charge us it much as much to do that second one but i i don't know i don't know how they bill whether it's on time or or just on the bill seems like they should just divide it by 10 they, they could do that yeah uh <laughs> let's see uh representative buckner since you used the music teacher as an example i'm just curious <laughs> why you just went with stem instead of sting it, it, it's in their steam Arts and math. Ah, I see it now. Sorry, long time. And I would like to add that, um, you know, one thing I think y'all, I don't know if, how many of y'all are on the education. What I know, many of you are on the education committee, but in general, we're trying. You know, Governor Deal did a really great job of trying to reinvigorate STEAM. You know, actual people who can actually do real jobs as opposed to going to college and getting a basket weaving degree and, and can't really do much with it. Uh, right, right now, we're trying so hard right now in Georgia to co uh, coordinate and push technical um, abilities. And, and that's why some of these wonderful super teachers are in, the, in these abilities we, we do, and we don't want to lose them. And these are the teachers as well that can be easily hired out of the teaching profession. These, these people can be hired out because they, they're, 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 their talents are widely wanted. We, we have a hard time keeping these people around because the, the, the um, corporate businesses out there want these people to work for them. That's why we need to have a better incentive. And, and this is really just a conversation, but I've been on the committee for a while, and, and this has always been considered sort of double dipping mm -hmm. in the past, and people had real heartburn about letting them, letting teachers come back from retirement and work full time because they felt it would be a huge disincentive to hiring new people to come into the field and work because it'd be such a difference in the amount that people are being paid. I understand the shortage. I understand the the high quality teachers coming back, but um, I, I guess that I'm just kind of wondering how do we do, if we're, it, it's gonna be a real policy change and shift to say that they can come back full time and how do we make that right with the other teachers and how do we not hurt the system? And, and I don't do you mind know if how I may to do all that. May I answer that yes, question, sir. Chairman? So, Again, do you want to talk about a minimum wage or a maximum wage? I want to talk about a maximum wage. I want these teachers to j join up as in college saying, wow, I can, I can make this much money. And, and I'm not stuck right here. I, I can make all this kind of money. Yeah, I know, you know if, if there was a teacher short, of, uh, we had too many teachers, and this is a terrible idea. But we don't have too many teachers. We have too few teachers, especially in rural areas. So I want, I want to you talk about maximum wage. I want to say, and I want, it's more about the profession. I want people to respect teachers i want them to go wow that's a teacher that's that's cool you know what 
I want them to do that. And, and one of the ways, that's that money, throwing money out there is not the only way to do that. But it's certainly, if you're saying that we, you're, you're so valuable, we want to keep you around, that, that's respect. And, the, 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 you know, the, these students don't respect their teachers because we don't respect the teachers, I don't think. I really don't. I, I think we as a, as a, maybe I'm going down a hole, I don't need to go now, but I think we as the Georgia, state of Georgia, we need to say we really respect our teachers. We care about the teachers. We want to make them as good as they could possibly be. And that's where these, these international, you know, stu uh, places that, that, that do better than us in, in, uh, in the, all, the, all these different, Singapore and Finland, all these countries that do better than, they don't spend their money and efforts on standardized tests. They spend their efforts and their money on great teachers. That's what they do, and they get great results. Okay. Uh, Representative Tarvin. I promise I'm not going to talk anymore. I am one of those people that the double dipping gives heartburn. But I want to tell you, I wish I'd have thought of this bill. I, think I really like the way this sounds. And uh, I don't think our teachers are taking, uh, I think we do appreciate them. But I think they're taken for granted more like sometimes we do our spouse because they're there and we expect them to be there. And, and, uh, uh, so maybe not appreciating them is not the correct word, but really just they're there and we send our kids to school and they babysit and be the police and disciplinarian and try to teach and with the state and federal government telling them what to teach, a lot of times they are really in a bad fix. But uh, I think both of you are bringing these bills and if they worked out financially, which in my head I don't see why they won't, uh, I think they're both uh, worth looking at. Thank you, sir. All right. Anyone else have a comment on or a question for the committee, uh, for the uh, chairman of the sponsor of the bill? Uh, one of the things that I wanted to, to mention that, that uh, Representative Buckner brought up is that we, we looked at this, seemed like it was about 10 years ago, to allow uh, full time, and then we changed it to to 49 percent because we were concerned about beginning to people coming out of the education schools not being able to find a job but my concern now is that the, that the education colleges are not turning out enough to fill the jobs and so um as as a retired educator i i the only thing I miss about teaching is the kids. Uh, I don't miss the hassle at all. Um, and, and so coming back this way, you don't have the hassle because you don't have a homeroom. You don't have any of the other responsibilities. So it, it, actually that's, that's a kind of utopian world there. Um, I'd like to, if, if I could, uh, Mr. Evans, do you have any comments about Mr. Belton's bill? I hate to put you on the spot, but I know how you love to talk, so <laughs> and I'm putting you on the spot, so <laughs> yeah. Um, once again, I think this is a well-intended bill that would do some things that would improve education. I think the way that it's narrowed down uh, specifically defines some of the things that we'd be looking at. Uh, the only question that I would have, and again, this would not necessarily coming from a TRS hat, but uh, the inclusion of special education teachers, I think, is another shortage area mm -hmm. that I would just perhaps suggest might be given consideration at some point in your conversation or in the bills. Uh, that, that's that's in the not a bad idea. To add, 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 add. But in um, I, I do open that. Blackman's bill, that would special ed would be included in that. Okay. Well, we have we have heard from uh, both sponsors. We have. Heard, is there anyone else out there in the audience that would like to speak to this? Do I have any people that are in the school systems that would like to speak to this? Don't everybody jump up at one time now? Um, No, they're not required. That's exactly right. They're not required, and, but and and if they do, then they understand what they're what they're getting into. So, uh, this the appropriate time. I think I would move for Representative Blackman's bill to go forward because that includes all teachers and all the subjects. Okay.
Okay. Are you putting that in form of a motion? We have a, a motion to uh, send House Bill 336 on for actuarial study. Uh, do I have a second? I have a second. Now, do I have anyone that would like any other comments about House Bill 320? Representative Kirby. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, the one thing, and maybe, maybe I'm reading it wrong and y'all can help me out, in 336 it talks about um, one half, it, it kind of gets into that 49 and a half percenters and they were talking about one half of their beneficiaries annual compensation there on line 72, where 320 it looks more like they're hired full time. Is, is this a part time versus full time or am I reading too much into it or missing something? 320 is full time. So, so 330, 336 is including current law. Is that, is that, would that be a fair statement? Would that be a fair statement? Yes. Okay. They technically both include the 49% the provision. So 40, you can still go back to work as a 49%er under the current provisions. It's just this, this being deemed restored to service as a teacher that when you break 49%, that's what's treated differently. Okay. All right, uh, Representative Tarvin. I promised I wouldn't say anything. That's else, okay. After I get older, it doesn't. My brain doesn't work. I just want to make sure uh, whether we're talking about the TR, what TRS thinks, or the school system thinks. If we do the actual, if we do the study, let's make sure they're just looking at teachers. They won't call everybody a teacher, will they? You see what I'm saying? We're just going to look at the classroom teacher, aren't we? If we do three twenty, I mean three thirty-six. I, I didn't see anything in there where it said administrators. I know, but is everybody when they say teacher, they're just going to they're just going to look at classroom teachers. No, they're going to look at what the law says. Huh? I believe they're going to look at what the law. They did raises. They did everybody, didn't they? Okay. It's going to be certified employees. That's my point. All right. All right. In to. All right. What are you reading on sixty nine? Hold that. Okay. So it would be a. But that's law. Yes, well, but that's correct. But well, we're not changing that current law. Okay. And on and in uh, 320, it says on line 17, academic instruction of students. Chairman Martin, did you have? I, I thought I heard Mr. Evans say, and I, he's right behind the column, so I can't see him. But I thought I heard him say the way in the, the in the retirement section that teacher was broadly used and, and would be referred to as basically a certified employee. So in this case, it would allow any certified employee, if they were doing actual study here, they would assume that this could apply to, to counselors, librarians, assistant, super, you know, correct? That, that, so I believe it would follow the current retirement law, the actuarial study would. I believe I heard Mr. Evans say that. Not to put her on the spot, but you do have a representative from the Georgia Department of Officer involved, uh, Ms. Swinney, so you might be able to provide clarity, but that is currently the Okay. Uh, Ms. Rabbit, Ms. Correct, the definition of teacher includes um, include anybody who's really eligible to be a member of the teacher's retirement system. Okay. Uh, okay. Go ahead. I, I certainly would welcome uh, a friendly amendment if there is. Uh, we intend to change as much, but I guess what, what, I would, what I would ask is, is that we consider it not to preclude, say, a principal that wanted to go back in and teach that's a, that's a good point, Dave. 
Mr. Chairman, may I? All right. Go ahead. Just, just a question again to you, you as chairman. You, you know this information. But if we're sending, I believe we have a motion before us and under discussion to send this to actuarial study. Mm -hmm. Again, they'll look at the broad base. If the gentleman comes back and needs to, to narrow it as he goes for his bill, he'd be able to do that under the actual study because you would be narrowing it, not broadening it. So it would probably, if there was a cost, it would probably be less, and that would be allowable. Is that is that not true? So if they study this, the, 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 the cost would, in, in theory, the since you think this is a fiscal board. fiscal bill, narrowing it would make it less less so fiscally you would you would think I mean, maybe not so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna respond. I, I understand <laughs> this it's like a lawyer's response you're not going to do that without uh, no one having more information but I, I believe we'd be okay asking for it like that and then address that the, the all right later. Uh, anyone else have any comments about we have a motion and a second on 336 any other discussion We have a motion and a second. I, does anyone want to put an amendment on 336? Again, can he not change the bill on, in, in the off session? And if, if this committee takes action to send the bill, if the gentleman changes the bill and the chair agrees to send that new bill, wouldn't that follow the committee's intent? So if, if we do that today and Chairman Blackman narrows the scope, the committee's under your direction you could allow that change bill to go forward with, and get an actual study as he amended it. Could, could he not? Didn't that, uh, not isn't I, that under I, your purview? I think as long as it hasn't gone that we could do that. Yes, sir. I, I thought uh, that would be under yeah. your purview. Okay. All right. Any other discussion on 336? Don't leave yet, Representative Belton. All right. Have a motion to second. All those in favor of sending 336 on to actuarial study, if you would raise your hand so we can count them. Any uh, no like sign, raise your hand. All right, that passes. <coughs> now, do I have do I have anyone that would like to make a motion that House Bill 320? Also go on for actuarial study. All right, I have a motion. I have a second. A discussion, Representative Tarvin. <laughs> if these teachers retire, this is a little late. If these teachers retire, come back full, and they're paying the 28% or whatever, they'll be under teachers' retirement insurance. And the teachers' retirement will be paying their insurance. Uh, that so would that, be correct. Wouldn't that needs to be looked into into the study. That's on. They, they, were, they were under the insurance anyway. I know, but they, the insurance is paying their premium. Wouldn't that be right? Paying part of it. If they were still working and retired, the school system would be paying it, yeah. correct? We're going to look at that, too. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Okay. All right, we've got a motion and a second on 320. Any other discussion on 320? All right, all those in favor of sending 320 on for an actuarial study, raise your hand. All right, it moves on to actuarial study as well. Thank you, Chairman Benton. Right. Okay. Thank you, committee. It, you, you realize that this is only actuarial study that it'll have to come back to the committee as whether or not it goes forward or not. Okay, all right. All right, we have one more bill. Uh, Representative Williams, 235. You want to sit at the seat or you want to go to the podium? How about going to the podium? Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chairman. We got one more bill today. All right, Representative Williams. This is the uh, firefighters bill. Um, basically, it's taking the the life insurance from $15,000 to $25,000. Uh, 
Um, also, um, with the study and active members who would otherwise qualify to be carried upon the active membership rolls, except for the fact that the member no longer holds the office of sheriff, members who are receiving retirement benefits, and members who are qualified to receive retirement benefits, except they have not reached the age of 55 years, have not filed an application, or have not yet been approved for benefits, and also for active members. This uh, also under this bill would increase the payments to the fund from fees collected in civil actions from a dollar to three dollars. And this is to certify that this bill is a fiscal retirement bill as defined in the public retirement system standards law. We're looking for all the stuff that you've just Okay, mentioned. that was just that was in the letter that I had. Um, and that's this is LC forty three one one six nine. Well, we're looking at LC forty three eleven sixty nine. Okay. Do you have that one? What's LC forty three thirteen? Wrong. Wrong. This LC is this the wrong one? All right. Do you have it? Okay. Excuse me. This bill would amend provisions relating to membership in the Georgia Firefighters Pension Fund. There you go. There you go. That's it. Uh, this bill would allow persons who are employed by the Fire Safety Division of the Office of the Commissioner of Insurance to join the fund, provided they are certified by the Georgia Firefighters Standard and Training Council. Um, this is to certify this re fiscal retirement bill is defined by the Public Retirement System Standards Law. Um, also, this changes from 15,000 to 25,000 like I previously said. And this would take effect, this act shall become effective July the 1st, 2020. I don't see that last, what you, last thing you said in the bill. No, the, the, the raising of the, from, t from okay, 10. Okay, that was with the previous one. Well, was this part of yours or? This is on like you're you're interchanging two different two bills. In here. Well, I'm reading what I was given. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. What we have and and this this is um, um, we have House Bill two thirty five and let's make sure that everybody's looking at LC forty three eleven sixty nine. Do you need a, Representative Williams? You need a copy of the bill right well, there in I've, front of. I've got this. Um, Okay. Right here. All right. All right. So basically what it's saying is that um, that anybody, any person employed as a firefighter or enrolled as a volunteer firefighter who meets the conditions is eligible to make application to the board for membership in the fund. So my question and we might need to get some folks up. Come on up here, Mr. Worst. Sorry, I think I think there's just a bunch of bills out there, and uh, oh, there's a lot. Yeah. Uh, so to be clear on this, this is uh, the if you look on line 41. Now, are you starting are, on there? Are we? We're still on the same bill we got in our folder here, 431169. Yeah, uh, the version I'm working on. Yeah, on okay. line uh, on line 41. Okay. This bill, what this does is to allow uh, some of the uh, folks from the the uh, fire marshal's office, mm -hmm. so the investigators who require certification and basically do a firefighter type job. Okay. It's a state agency. They fall under everything. Uh, there are similar people working in counties and municipalities doing the same type of job. This will allow the, those uh, for the fire marshal under the insurance commissioner's office will allow them to join the fund as long as as long as they need to be state certified as a as a part of their job. Okay. So and we we think there will be probably about thirty five to forty potential additions through this, but. Uh, it's a good recruiting tool for for the uh, fire marshal's office uh, and can help maybe prevent people poaching from them to add on. Uh, so it's got so the support you, of our board. You're using it as a recruiting 
Uh, yeah, and also it makes sense. Uh, it makes sense in terms of their duties. Uh, those same duties are performed by by types of firefighters as well. It's just that they don't work for a fire department. They they work for the the state, but okay. this is a state fund. Yes. All right, represent uh, Chairman Martin. Yeah, yes. So if not, but for this, they they are in what retirement fund now? ERS. They are in ERS. This is a this is a supplemental fund. So this we're not an employer. It's voluntary. They don't have to join if they don't want to. Uh, the payout is a lot less than what they would receive. Uh, this is in addition to what they would receive in, in ERS. But that's what they would they would be drawing their main fund, their main pension from ERS. Okay, so they're still going to be as part of ERS, and then we're opening up a um, we're opening up to put them into this pension fund in addition it, it it's voluntary if they want to do this as well but they would not it wouldn't affect their ers okay and, and, and this these yeah. aren't adversarial questions I'm yeah. just trying to get there but but also this is a fund or, or this pension fund is uh funded by the, the employees that are part of it and by um fees not not by this is not funded directly by the state if i recall correct right? so it's uh it's mostly funded by a one percent uh tax on property and casualty insurance okay. in yeah. the state and uh and then uh, that's about 90 percent a little over 90 percent of our non-investment revenue and then the rest comes from member dues the member dues so th that's what I was getting at. It wasn't an adversarial yeah. question at all. Uh, no, no, no. So this is going to be in addition to a, an ERS if they choose to participate there. Yes. They could pr participate in this, and then there would really be no state general revenue dollars going to this. It's just something that they wanted to participate in. That's correct. Thank you. Any other questions for the representative or Mr. Worth? Uh, what number are you down there? Okay. division is that it, it's just the terminology the the that that's an area that it, the fire marshal's office falls under the office of the insurance commissioner so I think that language just ties it to to make sure it, it relates to to those folks so is that any employee employed by the safety fire division or no uh, in a yes yes in a position that requires certification uh, with standards and training so it'd be your it'd be your uh, fire investigators yeah so yeah. any firefighter can join the pension fund correct uh, yes uh, any any uh, full time or part time firefighter can and as well as any volunteer uh, the volunteers have to meet certain training and call requirements each year, but if they fail to meet those, they're not kicked out of the fund. They just don't earn, earn service for that year. Okay. All right. Any other questions for Mr. Worst or uh, Representative Williams? Representative Buckner. I move that we send it for study. Have a, a motion to move for study. Second. I have several seconds. Any other discussions about the legislation? All right, we have a move and a second. No more discussion. All those in favor of uh, sending this on to actuarial study, if you would raise your hand. We're voting now, fellas. All right. All right, it passes. Um, Want to remind everybody that we will be back in here tomorrow at 11 o'clock. We have six more bills to go over tomorrow. Uh, we've already sent out the information on those bills that will be heard tomorrow. And then from that point on, we'll have to come up with a date to finish finish up all the other bills. And that'll, that'll be about 10 to 12 more bills that we'll be looking at. So uh, uh, we're looking probably in 1st of May, get it done. Anyone out there have any have any comments before we adjourn? Anyone on the uh, committee have any comments before we adjourn? All right, we will see you tomorrow at 11 o'clock. We're adjourned. <laughs>